Hi everyone, today is August 10th, 2019, and this is the Dual Assessment, your podcast for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. My name is Green Ranger, and it's a big week in Duel Links because the WCS 2019 is happening right now as we speak. Um, we're already in round 8, actually, of day 1, so the Duelists are almost done. We, we might know who is advancing to, to day 2 by now, but we'll have a live check of some of the results and some of the you know, skills and decks they're playing right now. Uh, we have a whole week of esports to recap. The Lynx Meta Championship Series 21 happened last week. Talk about those winning decks. Uh, other esports. Um, we have some PvE events going on. Leo and Luna's Duel Carnival. That's been uh, an upgrade over the past one. Two new cards from that event. Also, Solemn Odeon. Uh, with Solemn Odeon, we have two new cards, as well as Doug's Casual Deck of the Week, which is a farming deck for, for Odeon, so check out that section. So, let's get to it. Um, in terms of my own dueling, when I got Jaden slash Bell, I decided to start playing a character with a skillless 6 Sam deck just to level up the character, see where I go, and... I suddenly found myself in Legend 3, just playing from Plat... I don't know where I was in Plat, Plat 3 maybe? I found myself in Legend 3, and along the way I decided to switch over to Lumis and Umbra, and then I got uh, Light and Dark for the first time, so... Uh, this, you know, playing Skillless, Six Sams showed how good the deck was in the meta at the time, and... When I switched over to Light and Dark, for some reason I deranked all the way to Legend 1, so it's kind of funny how I was playing a skillless deck and got so far and then didn't. Um, I think I just had a really big win streak and that's what happened, but anyways, I am playing Light and Dark 6 Sam's, trying to get back to King of Games. It's still very early in the month, but I think all indications, well maybe the finals will show something different, but... All indications are six Sams are going to probably get nerfed at some point after the World Championship Series 2019. Um, so now's my chance to make the most out of six Sams and get King Games with it. Yeah, I think I think a few cards will be nerfed. I might just drop hints. World Legacy Clash probably is another one because everyone's putting it in every deck. But you know things are going to shift. There's going to be new cards, new mechanics coming up soon. Uh, people are saying. XZ's world, I mean, um, Zexel, I think, Zexel and XZ's might come to the game, so, um, you know, there's gonna be a lot of learning, relearning of the game, because I don't know how to play XZ's, but, um, we'll see where I get to with Light and Dark Exams. So, Dueling's Meta Championship Series 21 happened last week, last Saturday, and it's a uh, special rules to simulate the World Championship Series 2019, Three decks, best of three, different decks, different skills, and of course the big rule is that they shared the cards, so you can only use three of each unlimited card across all decks, two semi-limits, and one uh, limited card across each deck. So, first place, Gabriel, Gabriel B.O.V.C., three decks, Ancient Gears, Light and Dark Six Sands, and Switcheroo, Cyber Dark uh, Desperado, Cyberdark, Neos, Ancient Gears. Uh, I mean, all decks, the Ancient Gear decks always look the same. And this one does run Twister, which helps you destroy the face-up. So a trap on the field, which is pretty good. Because you have Gear Town, of course. And it's, it's kind of to counteract. Everyone knows they're going to play Double Cyclone, so they don't play it, uh, Spell or Trap. And Twister is for, you know, your own cards. Destroying your own cards when you know your opponent's not going to set something. Three Paleozo Canadias, of course, that's sort of always a very good addition to put any deck when you're running this three deck format. Light and Dark Six Sams. Um, this is a very cut and dry version. You got your two Light Monsters, two Anishi, and two Dark Monsters, Legendary Secret. Some decks run Iru, the Destroy Face Down card. Some decks run Kizaru, or some combination of them. This one doesn't have either, so these are the fastest ones. Three Kizen and two Legendary Secret. They cheat themselves out to get the level 5 Synchro Summon. 
and the Switcheroo Desperado Cyber Dark Neos. Um, we've seen this deck enough. Um, this doesn't have the BM4 Blast Spider, so uh, there's more stall cards. There's room to put stall cards in. There's two Drowning Mirror Force, two Econ, things like that. Second place, Haru. Tie that binds six Sams. Lab Builder, Subterror, Neos, and Ancient Gears. Um, this uh, six Sams deck, no Iru, but it has a Kizaru and one Legendary Secret. Uh, Kizaru, of course, is a great card advantage card. It has more attack than the other uh, six Sams. And it's an Earth Monster. That's that's the important thing about Kizaru. It doesn't really fit into Lane Dark. So that's why it's there. With the skill, of course. Lab Builder, Subterror, Neos. Subterrors never really went away. They got nerfed, but they're not they're not as good as they used to be, but they're still very good. Um, Lab Builder helps them stall a little bit. You got uh, two Floodgates and three PLA Zoe Canadia as well. So right now it's combined into the Neos package. 80 Changer, two Neos, three Neos Fusions. Finally, Ancient Gears. Um, very standard build, two... Reactor Dragon, 2 Breaker, 3 Wyvern, 3 Galaxy Cyclone, 2 Econ, 3 Gear Town, 2 Fortress, 3 Drowning Mirror Force. Third place, Vino Poiedi, Destiny Draw, Cyber Dark Neos, Balance Triamids, Light and Dark Spellbooks. Um, old version of Cyber Dark Neos before Desperado came out, so there's Lava Golem, Sphere Karibos, 3 Sphere Karibos actually. Also, Tackle Crusader. Tackle Crusader is kind of like another Sphere Karibo or Bacon Saver type card. There's a Bacon Saver too, so a lot of stall potential in this deck. Balance Triamids. Uh, pretty solid deck. Uh, balance, of course, plays a big role because it is an unknown. It could be any duelist. So, if you're bringing this to World Championships, and you're running a character, they could be running Balance, and you do fool your opponent, and you beat them with Triamids. And Light and Dark Spellbooks, pretty standard. Uh, they almost always run Sukuyomi now, the Spirit Monster. And third place, Black Jesus, Switcheroo, Magnet Warriors, Balanced Triamids, and Ancient Gears. Switcheroo, Magnet Warriors, Grass is Greener build here. 30 cards. And I've played against this deck in Ranked. And I found that the card Magnet Conversion is a very good refill card. It's very good in getting your Berserkion back on the board after it's been destroyed. So, pretty solid deck. They throw in, when you have 30 cards, you could just throw in anything you want, really. So, Block Dragons here, Doki Doki, Lease from Stone, so a lot of stuff. Balance Triamids, again. It's funny, um, this guy's one of the better deck builders. There's two release from stone in the Magnet Warrior deck, and then the third release from stone is in the Triamid deck. Because they're all rock monsters as well, so pretty cool there. And Ancient Gears, very standard build. Again, Drowning Mirror Force seems to be a staple in Ancient Gears now. Alright, so that was uh, Meta, Meta Championship Series 21. Duel Links Meta Weekly 84 happened, and this was a legendary deck format. Uh, two decks each. Of course, legendary deck format is a bit of a nerf. You have to play certain cards with the duelists and, of course, certain skills. So they're they're not refined decks because, you know, uh, you have to run some cards you don't normally play. Uh, most people brought Crowler as expected. Ancient Gears did dominate the field again. Bandit Keef came up quite a bit too. Or Switcheroo um, Desperado decks, I guess. First place, Kenji, Tie That Binds Spellbooks with Yugi Moto, and Switcheroo, Cyber Dark Neos with Keith. Um, spellbooks, the only wrinkle is you have to run Silent Magician level 4, otherwise there's not too much of a change in the deck. It is a 20 card deck, which you typically don't see in um, Spellbooks. Typically you have more of the level 4 monsters like Breaker or Kaiku, there's only one Breaker in this deck. And level 4 Silent Magician, you're not really banking on it getting the level 8 out. You try to use the regular Silent Magician for that, but it's there. Switcheroo, Cyber Dark, Desperado, Cyber Dark Neos. 
has to run Old Barrel Dragon, which you're probably not going to play. There's no way to really get it out except for Tribute Summons. And 7 Completed. 7 Completed is just a regular equipped spell for your machines. Cyber Dark Edge is such a machine, so it's not the worst card in the world, but it gets in the way, I guess. Otherwise, you've got... There's not much room for protection traps. There's two Cosmic Cyclone, one Bacon... Bacon Saver is pretty much your only protection, so that's kind of what you're banking on in this deck. Second place, Drizzle's Tie that binds Magnet Warrior with Yugi Moto, and Trick Up the Sleeve, Dark Magician with Arcana. This is a 30 card Magnet Warrior deck. Because it's a 30 card deck, you can kind of mess around. So there's Gandora in here to fit the requirement. There's Valkyrian, which is another Magnet Warrior. There's two Beta the Magnet Warriors as well. Um, otherwise, you can kind of mess around with the deck. Um, Block Dragon seems to be a staple here. Magnet Conversion, of course, like I mentioned, pretty good card. And Dark Magician deck, this is pretty much the exact. Uh, exact type of Dark Magician deck you would see on the ladder because they run Knight and Sorcerer as the as the um, chosen tuner. So um, you know, three Magicians Navigation is very good. Illusion Magic, Dark Magic Attack, Thousand Knives, uh, Champions Vil Vigilance are all cards you see. Three Magicians Rod. Third place, Shiny Sophion, Endless Trap House of Terrors with uh, Neos. I mean, Odeon and Neo Spatians with Jaden. So it's Endless Trap Hell deck with Odeon. Uh, the Sub Terrors, there's two Umistrix, one Saiga Kraken, three Warrior, and three Sub Terror Final Battle. Other than that, you have a bunch of Trap Monsters. Three Statue of Anguish, two Paleozoic Canada, three Embodiment of Apophis, and the Temple of Kings. So, Temple of Kings was required in the three Embodiment of Apophis. So, Temple of Kings is a card you're never even going to play. Um, it's just taking up an extra spot here. And of course, um, some of these decks run bad aims. This one runs two bad aims, so it's pretty good. Pretty good removal. And the Neo Spatian deck, it's another way to play Neo Fusion. Um, it does a lot of little things, though. There's special summoning from the deck, which Neo Space Connector does. Special summons Neo in defense mode. Disrupts hands, Aqua Dolphin, um, disrupts the hand, um, does some burn, destroys the card, and then inflicts damage. Healing, a uh, Hummingbird heals, Low Moss stalls, there's card draw with covert co Convert Contact, and Mass Removal. Um, Elemental Hero Storm Neos does Mass Removal, so the deck does a little bit of everything. And third place, come on now, Kelly. Ancient Gears and Neospatians. Ancient Gears, this is the fusion version of Ancient Gears, so um, not the regular version you see in the ladder. Two Ancient Gear Golem, three King of the Swamp, one Ancient Gear Box, two, eight, three Ancient Gear Frame, three Wyvern, three Polymerization, three Paleozo Canadia, two Treacherous Trap Hole. The goal, of course, is to get Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem out to get a one turn kill. And the Neospatian deck, this is a bit of, a bit of a different look. Uh, two Night Beams, which is very interesting. It's nice to see that card to see some play. Three Drowning Mirror Force. And going into the WCS 2019, Duelist Meta updated the tier list. Uh, six Sams are the clear top deck they have. Um, many indications of Six Sams. Every player bringing a Six Sam deck. Of course, it's dominating ranked. As I mentioned, I was playing a skillless version, and it did fine. Cyberdarks have been moved down to Tier 2, in a very crowded Tier 2 triumphant, doing great. Spellbooks also heavily represented. Blue Eyes pegged down a bit, but still very good. Ancient Gears, they're pretty much everywhere. And Desperados, kind of with the Cyberdarks. Tier 3, there are some new additions. Metaphys are still around. I kind of wish they weren't around, because the games take forever, but... They're around. Magnet Warriors have been added on, and Subterrors are back. And Red Eyes have been removed. Red Eyes you don't really see much anymore, even in ranked. So that's kind of the structured deck deck that has fallen out of favor with um, you know all the new additions to the meta. I think Desperado counters it pretty good. So 
Uh, let's talk about the WCS 2019, and that's the theme of the podcast question of the week. How much do you care about the Duel Links WCS 2019 event? Um, 57% said I, I will, a lot. I care a lot. We will watch the streams. 36% said they care a little bit. They will check the winning decks. 0% said they don't care that much, and 7% said they did not know about it. So, um, uh, the listeners, the people who basically respond on Twitter are pretty much into the game, so, um, nice to see the investment there, and let's check into the WCS 2019 standings right now. Right now, just checking into the standings as right now, round one appears to be over, day one is over, in group A, 10 duelists and the top four will move on, Andy Sang, four and four, does not appear to be moving on. Decade two and six definitely not moving on, so another uh, out for Decade. FM Vino three and five will not move on. Sunri Santi five wins three losses looks like he will be moving on. Raw also five wins three losses, so two uh, German players looks like they're moving on to day two. I believe this is Shimon. I can't read Japanese, but he's one of the Japanese players. Six wins, two losses. Very impressive. He's moving on. Yuko, three wins, five losses, will not be moving on. Nightingale, three wins, five losses, will not be moving on. Um, another Japanese player. Let me see if I can figure this out. Uh, probably Well. The player known as Well. Four wins, four losses, will not be moving on. And Sun Sun, five wins, three losses, will be moving on. So four players moving on are Sunri, Santi, Raw, Shimon, and Sun Sun. In Group B, Jason, four wins, four losses, will not be moving on. Actually, I'm not sure about that. There's one player kind of in limbo. Zeta, six wins, two losses, he will be moving on for sure. Edu 16, 5 wins, 3 losses. He will be moving on for sure. Belban, 1 win, 7 losses. Will not be moving on. Kobayashi, 4 wins, 4 losses in Limbo. March, 2 wins, 5 losses. Will not be moving on. Raymond, 4 wins, 4 losses in Limbo. Yugen, 4 wins, 3 losses. I think he will be the one moving on because he has 3 losses instead of 4 losses. Find 4 wins, 4 losses. <laughs> And the uh, reigning world championships uh, guy from 2018, that five wins, three losses, he will be moving on. So, you know, based on the tiebreaker things, I think there's a tie. Um, I think the, the, well, the two guys moving on from Brazil, Zeta and Edu16, uh, the reigning world champion will be moving on. And I think Yugen Height. So um, if Yugen does move on to round two, it appears all of the German competitors have moved on to day two. So very impressive um, showing for the home team. But looking at the at the characters, they pretty much brought the same decks. Uh, legendary decks. There's no... Um, there's no Cyrus, that's what I noticed. So Cyrus appears to be out. There's a lot of Odeons, a lot of Yugi's, a lot of a lot of uh Kaiba. Some you Bell decks. Some Crowler. There's a Leo, that's an interesting one. A lot of Shizu, so Sealed Tomb seems to be in again. Um Some uh Sartorius for the coin flips, I guess. A lot of um, light and dark decks as well. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll know the final results, of course, by next week, uh, by tomorrow probably, but those are the competitors moving on to day two. Move on to PvE events. Leo and Luna's dual, car- dual carnival. This is um, a redo of the event from Esperoba. There are notable, notable differences this time. The last time they made you pick teams according to different types, so, you know, this type, uh, Beast Warriors versus Warriors, things like that. This time everyone's on the same team, sort of. You're you're picking a dual monster, 
that is the same type as another. So we had machines against machines, warriors against warriors. It doesn't matter which side you pick. It does all. Well, I guess it's it's more of a popularity contest. That's what it is, really. And notably, round three had Dark Magician versus Dark Magician Girl. We'll see how how, how much Dark Magician Girl beats Dark Magician, but. This event is going on to the 15th, so we're kind of halfway through the event. And uh, same type boost, as I mentioned. So you play basically the deck, uh, the type. You don't have to play a type, but they get field power bonus, so might as well. It's a decent way of getting gems. Um, a lot of the chests do have one gem each, so you just keep doing it. You get one gem each. Uh, of course, they have 60 each day if you win for each win, so... Um, if you're on the winning team three times a day, you get 60 gems. I personally find this hard to get. I just don't have that much time to duel. And I was trying to do a lot of PvP uh, games. Um, I mean, this is PvP, but I was doing ranked, I guess. So, um, I just didn't have time to get all the gems every day. Of course, this is PvP, so it's an easy way of getting people into PvP. And it helps boost your... Um, ranked dual rewards for the year or for the month so you could work towards getting that third SR ticket uh, very useful for that yeah so new cards two new cards Beast Machine King Bar Barbaros Ur level 8 Beast Warrior 3800 attack 1200 defense you can special summon this card from your hand by banishing one machine and one beast your hand, field, or graveyard. If this card attacks or is attacked, your opponent takes no battle damage. So, very decent card. It's a very strong monster to cheat out. You cheat out stuff sometimes, they have decent attack. This one has 3,800. This could kill anything on the board, really. Um, but, uh, of course, the stipulation is you're combining beast warriors and machines in the same deck. How's that really going to work? They, they are types with no synergy. So I think it's best thing to do is to have a Beast Warrior deck that runs machine tuners. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. Uh, Glad Beasts, Fire Kings, um, Bujins are machine are Beast Warriors too. So there's several types you could play with and there's some generic machine tuners I know. So if there's like a, I think Unknown Synchron's a machine. So the best way is to combine a, a Beast Warrior deck with some Machine Tuners. You do some Synchro Summons, and you get this guy out for free. It doesn't matter that he doesn't attack, um, inflict damage. It's kind of just a way to clear out the board. It's a pretty good way to do it. So, of course it's not a competitive card. That's, you know, first things first. That's, that's the first thing, because you're combining those two archetypes. Until there's a playable you know, Beast Warrior plus Machine thing going on. Armored White Bear is the other new card. Level 4 Water Beast, 1800 attack, 1400 defense. When this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one level 4 or lower Light Beast monster from your deck or graveyard. So, this kind of is like... It's a better version of Mother Grizzly. Um, you know, not Mother Grizzly or Water types or anything like that, but it's a, it's a Destroy on Search card. And um, it works from the deck and graveyard, which is very flexible. It's got 1,800 attack and can be destroyed by battle or effect. So there's a lot of good here, but the problem is level 4 or lower light beast. Very specific group there. Not a lot of cards you play. So what can you play in Duel Links? There are some Bujinjis, which... Bujinjis don't do much when they're on the board on their own. It's They're just helpers for Bujins, so not really useful there. Ojamas, so you could cheat out an Ojama. Otan Cerebrus is a card that um, it negates traps. I forget what it does, but it does something pretty good. Regulus is a Luna card that is a beat stick. Raiko, Lightsworn Hunter. Fabled, Voltic Kong. So... You know, these are cards that people don't play at all, really. You do see Raiko, the Light Swarm Hunter, but it's for its flip effect. You don't really want to summon that onto the board. So, 
The ability is good, but what it searches out isn't, so not a very useful card. That is it for the dual carnival. It'll keep going on, of course. It's a, it's a nice way to get gems, so do do this as much as you can for the gems. There are improvements to various features. I thought this was a pretty funny announcement when they had it. Um, extra deck cards are now filtered in the Rank Duel's popular card ranking. So when you're looking at popular cards, often there were extra deck cards that just got in the way. It didn't really matter. Those cards didn't really tell you much about the meta. So now you can filter those out so there's more space for other monsters. Um other monsters in the top ranks of course and then they also have something called increased capacity for point battles honestly when they showed me this i didn't even know what point battles were um i still don't know what point battles are so i assume it's like a it's their way of doing the tournament format but yeah i don't know what point battles are i know dual rooms are a thing they worked on the dual rooms and that's kind of how they're that's kind of how they have the tournament client for the game. So, um, I don't know, I don't really know what point battles are. But those are the improvements there. Let's move on to the last thing to talk about Solemn Odeon. Second return of Solemn Odeon. Previously, Brawl Off Trap Monsters, um, as rewards. So, this is the second coming of the event. Two new cards here. Grand Marg let's see yeah. Grand Marg the Mega Monarchs. The first one, level eight rock, twenty eight hundred attack, one thousand defense. You could tribute summon this card by tributing one tribute summoned monster. When this card is tribute summoned, target up to two set cards on the field, destroy those targets. If this was tribute summoned by tributing an earth monster, add this additional effect, draw also draw one card after that. So, this is for the Monarch archetype, and the Monarchs focus on tribute summoning for a, typically it's like a 2400-1000 stat line. I don't know why they always focus on that stat line, but that's their deal. This is different. This card, you have to have tributed, this is a 2 tribute monster, obviously as a level 8. It counts the tributed monster as a double, so... You get your Monarch on the board, and then you tribute the Monarch for this card. So, there's two separate tributes going on here. Um, if you're able to do that, you know, there's ways to do it. You you ramp onto the board with Mithra, or your Junk Forward, things like that, or a Gilosaurus. If you're able to do that, this card's pretty good. You destroy two set cards, typically... You know, face down, monster, back row type situation, two back rows. Of course, they could react to it, so this gets flipped over, 1,000 defense, not that good. Um, and you get card draw if you tribute, if you get an earth monster. So that level 5 or 6 person is an earth monster, you get draw a card. Overall, this is not a meta card again. It will only work with monarchs. There's not really a meta deck that tributes summons monsters nowadays. I can't think of one. There's Synchro Summoning, of course, but that's not Tribute Summoning. Even Earth Attribute decks like Magnet Warriors, they don't they don't Tribute Summon anything. So, uh, no fits in the current meta right now for this card. I think the last Tribute deck we had was, like, Vampires. <laughs> vampires were very good. They made Tribute Summoning okay. The other new card this event is the Prime Monarch Continuous Trap. Once per turn, you can target two Monarch spells and traps in your graveyard, shuffle them into the deck, draw one card. If this card is in your graveyard, you can banish one other Monarch spell or trap from the graveyard. Special Summons card in defense as a normal monster, Fairy Light, level 5, 1000, attack, 2400 defense. You can only use this effect once per turn. So, this is a refill card for Monarch spells and traps. And we do have a few Monarch spells and traps in Duel Links. There's the first Monarch, which is also a prize from this event. It's a Trap Monster, 1,000 attack, 2,400 defense. It's kind of the counterpart of the Prime Monarch, because that's a Fairy with the same stat line. That's a, the first Monarch's a Fiend. The Monarch's Awaken is a protection trap we have. Escalation of the Monarchs is a continuous trap. 
Frost Blast of the Monarchs is a removal spell. Strike of the Monarchs is a quick play. So there's a there's a situational recycle of this card. The, the Prime Monarch, you could recycle your cards back into your deck and draw one. So that's a pretty good engine. Um, you know, and, and then this card gets popped. It's a Trap Monster with 1,2400. So, you know, this is not a meta thing, but Trap Monsters, I feel like... I feel like Paleozoics were a deck at some point, a lower tier deck. Um, this isn't Paleozoics, but you could get Statue of Anguish Pattern out, get some Trap Monsters, use Vision Hero, Witch Raider, blow up the board. There's there's a few fun things you could do. It's not really competitive right now. It's more fun. And because I'm not a... I don't farm these types of roaming duelist events, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't, or it doesn't mean that you don't have to. So, in lieu of my laziness of preparing a farming deck, Doug Dimidul is here with one. And how do you stop Odeon? You use uh, Jinzo to negate traps. But he puts his own spin on it. It involves Claw of Haramos and some dragons and light and dark. So, Doug Dimidul is here right now with that Odeon farming deck. Hey there, this is Doug Dimadul with Doug's Casual Deck of the Week. This week I got one to help you out if you're trying to farm Odeon and try and maximize your chances of getting some of those pretty good pulls that he's working on. So I was just trying to figure out the best, most efficient way to make sure that I could get a Jinzo on the field as soon as possible if you're going up against level 40 Odeon. Uh, if you're not aware, Odeon's level 40 deck is just mostly trap-based monsters. So, I was thinking, what, what's the best way that I could do this? Well, if you had Esperoba, you'll know that we do have one copy of Jinzo Jector. Now, Jinzo Jector is, a, uh, is just a one a card that you're able to get through leveling Esperoba up, but it's really your best way to get your Jinzo out, and you can get it out quickly as possible in this deck. So, what deck am I talking about? I'm talking about a Loomis and Umbra Light and Dark scale deck. So, how does Light and Dark work? Well, as long as you have monsters that have the same level uh, type and attribute, or, uh, well, as long as one uh, type is, uh, or what is it, the attribute? Attribute is, is the light or dark. So uh, basically, you're going to have uh, a few light machine monsters to offset the fact that Jinzo Ejector is a dark machine monster. So effectively, this allows you the opportunity to have so many opportunities to uh, have an opening hand that's going to have one of those light machine monsters. You shuffle it back into your deck using the light and dark skill, and then uh, you get a dark um, a dark level 4 machine, which is Jinzo Jector. So, hopefully turn 2, after Odeon has already set a bunch of trap cards, you're able to then play your Jinzo Jector, activate its effect to tribute itself to search out your deck for a Jinzo, and then as long as your opponent has at least one set uh, trap card, which uh, Odeon should, if, especially if you're going turn two, then you could play that Jinzo and just do your thing for the rest of the duel, uh, bulk up your uh, your monster's attack power, and uh, go from there. So effectively, this has been a very, very efficient deck. Using um, So I'll just use any level four machine monster. So I'll run three copies of Bio Falcon. It doesn't matter which light machine monster you use. I just did it because it's a light machine monster. Effectively, all I'm using this for is hopefully opening tur uh, my first turn with this card in my hand so I could use the light and dark skill to get Jinzo Ejector uh, in my hand as soon as possible. Once you establish your Jinzo, which in this deck I run two copies of, because there is a chance that your Jinzo Ejector may get popped. And the only scenario where I could see that happening is if uh, Odeon has that one trap card that as long as there's another 
monster trap on the field uh, that's summoned while that trap card's on the field, it will pop whatever card is on the field. So before you could activate Jin's Objector's effect, uh, Odeon may pop that card, in which case you're going to have to play the long game. So just have a, a monster with a strong enough attack to hang out on the field, uh, and, and hopefully, you know, it'll work. But like I said, 90% of the time, it's not going to be the case. Uh, you're going to be able to get off with this... Um, uh, with this strategy pretty consistently. So, uh, how's the deck laid out? Like I said, I got my two copies of Jinzo, my one copy of Jinzo Jector, and if you don't remember who Jinzo is, Jinzo is the machine, uh, the dark machine monster, level six. Uh, trap cards and their effects on the field cannot be activated, and then you also negate all trap effects on the field. So, uh, this is going to stop Odeon in its, in its tracks, so it's real easy. And then, like I said, you run uh, three copies of Bio Falcon or any other level four light machine monster. That This part doesn't matter. Uh, as long as you have your copy of Jinzo Jector and your two copies of Jinzo, uh, the rest is up to you. So, I'd figured out the best way to maximize the attack when I'm going in and swinging for game and trying to maximize my dual assessment score. So, effectively what I do is I just run my one copy of Gravekeeper's Vassal. That's what I want to finish the game with. But how am I going to bo uh, boost up Gravekeeper's Vassal without using cards like Union Attack and things like that? Well... We're lucky enough to have the Claw of Hermos, so what I do is I run three copies of Red Eyes Black Dragon Sword in my extra deck. This card must be special summoned with the Claw of Hermos using a dragon type monster and cannot be special summoned in other ways. Then when the card's special summoned, you target one other face up monster on the field and equip this card to it. It gains a thousand attack and five hundred attack and defense for each dragon type monster on the field and in the graveyards. So, uh, I mean, your opponent isn't going to have any dragon type monsters on the field or the graveyard however you should so the rest of the deck that i have here is all dragon monsters and my goal is to get as many dragon monsters in the graveyard as possible so how do i do that by using one of the card trader cards vanguard of the dragon level four dragon 1700 attack 1300 defense you can send one dragon type monster from your hand to the graveyard then this card gains 300 attack when this card you control is sent uh, to your graveyard by your opponent's uh, card effect, you can target one dragon type normal monster in either player's graveyard and special summon that target. So, I'll run my three copies of Dragon Spirit of White just because I have them. You could use any other dragons, but because this card is normal in the graveyard, it pairs well in case they pop my Vanguard of the Dragon using some kind of effect. But I noticed that Odeon is a little cautious to attack into your Vanguard of the Dragon by using one of the, uh, the techniques with... Um, uh, you know, those, those Tiki trap cards that uh, uh, end up destroying a monster that another trap card battles with. So overall, they know that you're going to get your Dragon Spirit of White out and banish one of the trap cards. So uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's a really, really good combo. If you have your three copies of White Stone of the Ancients, use that. So what I do is turn one, worst case scenario, I hope to have another copy of this card in my hand, and that's Black Metal Dragon. I'm not really running a Red Eyes engine in here, but what I use Black Metal Dragon for is because it's a dark level 1 dragon. Well, what's a light level 1 dragon? The White Stone of Ancients. So worst case scenario, I could shuffle my Black Metal Dragon back into the deck, pull a copy of the White Stone of Ancients, set that card, and if it gets popped during the next turn, or if it gets uh, run over by battle, I could at least summon a Dragon Spirit of White onto the field to buy time until I could either pull a Jinzo or the appropriate card to get my Jinzo Jector play uh, going appropriately. So that's really the end game. Ultimately, after you get all your dragons into the graveyard, you'll want to normal summon your Gravekeeper's Vassal. Uh, maybe a few times you'll use your Claw of Hermos multiple times. If you could, if you could equip two different um, two different copies of Red Eyes Black Dragon Sword to your Gravekeeper's Vassal and just start running over any other monsters, which there shouldn't be, um, you, you're going to have a wide open lane for your Gravekeeper's Vassal to just swing directly for game. Nothing's going to get in the way because level 4 Odeon I don't think has any monster cards. It's really just traps. So uh, that's why, I mean, it, this is just one of the most straightforward ways to farm Odeon. It is very simple. You don't need to use your secret pass to the treasures or whatever that card is where uh, you, it, you're going to need all these cards in your hand before you can make your final move. You don't have to worry about that. All you just need is a Gravekeeper's Vassal and Claw of, uh, the Claw of Hermos. And from there, just a crap ton of dragons in your graveyard, and you are good to go. You're all set. Uh, I like to use the Results Booster, because I've noticed that the Dual Assessment is typically around 
6700 to about 7300 uh, I need more prismatics. I think that's what I'm missing. But uh, as long as you use your results booster, then you'll significant. You'll usually hit around 8,000 dual assessment points, and you'll be able to farm Odeon to the maximum level. So, again, using Lumis and Umbra, using that light and dark skill, it really increases the consistency for you to get your Jinzo play going. Or, worst case scenario, get your White Stone of Ancients to uh, to make some super awesome plays and uh, just kind of keep things going so uh yeah that's basically it for my uh my casual deck you could even try this out in in ranked i don't know how it's going to work for you but if your opponent is using a uh, a deck with a lot of paleozoics or is using a trap heavy deck then uh they're probably going to rage quit on you if they see that you're running this type of deck so uh yeah that's basically it i think this is a fun one uh, this will make farming odeon extremely easy extremely straightforward and uh, if you go to my twitter account you could see a screenshot or two of, uh, of how this deck looks in action. And, uh, yeah, I would just say uh, definitely go for this one. If you have the, uh, if you have, you know, a bunch of dragons, if you have the Jinzo, uh, uh, you know, the Jinzo engine, then you're, you're good to go. So, uh, anyway, that's it for my deck of the week. I will see you next time. Take care. Alright, thanks Doug. You can check him out on his podcast every week. Um, and also his Twitter page. His Twitter page has some uh, highlights about how this deck works. Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Talk is his name. Alright, so that is it. Actually, yeah, this is a very short episode. Wow. Um, let me see what I can talk about. I have upcoming news to talk about. Hag Duel Tournament, new skill for Loomis and Umbra. We will see if it's OP. Um, dual Quest back mid Dark Signer Carly Carmine, late August, Mission Circuit with Necroid Synchro, and the Kaiba Cup will be back September 5 to 16. Uh, let me see if I can fill up some time here. So, there are some leaks with different things. There's this new mini box coming out eventually called Curse of Dread, and I'm not going to go over these cards because there's going to be a separate episode for that whenever this, these cards come out, but. I do see the Vendred archetype. So the Vendreds are ritual monsters. They're all featured in this in this set. Plague Spreader Zombie is a very it's a very famous card. It seems to be a very uh, versatile tuner. And then it brings a bunch of synchro monsters, Red Eyes, Zombie, Necro Dragon, Doom Kaiser Dragon, Revived King, Hades. So there's a lot of zombie cards in this set. Pyramid Turtle, very uh, known card. There are some Fabled. There are some Snakes. A lot of Snake Venom mechanics. Anyways, that's a look at the new box, Curse of Dread. Um, you know, after the World Championship Series 2019 ends, I expect a bunch of nerfs to go through. Uh, probably the most commonly brought skills, of course, in, thing, in Duelist. Six Sams are probably going to hit. I don't know about Ancient Gears. Ancient Gears have just been around forever, but so they're going to lose money if they nerf their own box, uh, structured deck boxes. So I'm not sure how they're going to handle that. I think World Legacy Clash is definitely going to get a hit. It's just a RN rarity card that everyone's just running into their decks. Um, I mean, I, I expect a big shakeup. This Curse of Dread box might be released before before the new mechanics come in. People do expect XZs to come up soon. They typically come up after the World Championship Series around like September, October. That's when the new world comes out. So a bunch of new stuff is coming. Of course, um, Carly Carmine is coming at the end of this month as well. So, you know, we're we're ending an era in Duel Links. Uh, we have, we're we're going to have a, we have the reigning champion still playing. So we're going to see if we have a new champion. And... There's going to be a new future, so I'm really excited to see where the game goes from here. That's it for this podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, check out the podcast. Search the Dual Assessment. We're on everywhere. Um, feel free to talk to me on Twitter. Dual underscore assessment. Green Ranger CCG. Websites to dualassessment.wordpress.com. Um, you know, 
participate in the question of the week. If you have any suggestions on question of the week, please let me know that as well. All right. Thank you very much for listening, everyone, and I'll see you later.